For the month of November, we've been really trying to create greater space in our world for God. That was our intention. In our newsletter, it said, um, we wanted to shift anything in our human value system to include God more, a commitment on any level, so that we could heighten our consciousness to be more receptive to that indwelling Christ. And we've been working very hard. We looked at our words. We looked at our ability to receive. We looked at our karma. We looked at what we're grateful for. And always the last uh, Sunday in December, we start our Christmas celebration, preparing for the celebration of the cross, which is so powerful. But in preparation and realization, I want to go back and let's just look at the theme of the month. And that is a greater receptivity to God. And most of us, we get up, we rise, we do, we go to bed, we sleep. We get up, we have good intentions, we respond to the world around us, and then we release it when we go back to sleep the next night. Even when we get up and we have our morning prayer time and we have our morning meditation time, how much of the day do we think of God? And we may do a cursory thank you angels if we see them. We may do a blessing if someone's hurting. But how often do we ask for God's intervention? I was talking with my son about some project he was working on. I made sure this with you all and something had gone around. <coughs> And he called for Reiki and prayer. And I said, well, honey, have you prayed? And he goes, oh, yeah, you betcha. I said, well, did you pray before you started? And he goes, no, I need to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to pray before I get going, instead of always having to pray after the fact, after something may not work. And, of course, it works. It always works. There's always divine intervention that filters through, so we can receive it, and everything comes back into order and harmony. But what we want to do is we want to really understand Christmas is a fabulous time. It's a time when we open up to God globally. Do you realize that? I mean, it's taboo, actually, in our world to discuss religion outside the world, out in the world. We, it, it's really not done. Do you know? Even talking to each other about it is kind of odd in the world, much less talking to someone else about it. But Christmas... Christmas, globally, the world turns to God. So it's a fabulous time where people are opening up for us to renew and really look at what our beliefs are about God. I mean, if someone approached you outside the world and started talk, talking to you about God, would you be able to respond? Yeah, yes. I know him too. First name basis. He lives with my house. This is really a time for us to create greater space for that. All right, so as metaphysicians, we seek to grow the Christ within, and we know that anything has to have energy invested in it to grow. And our world is about relationships. We have a relationship with one another, with people. We really have to have that relationship with God. We have to have that. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, there are times when I get so lonely, so lonely, and I'll just tell Patrick, I am so lonely. I miss God so much. And then I get mad at myself, and then I yell at him, you know, because I have not included enough, I haven't had enough time to, to feel God or, or to let God be a part of my world. I get so involved in what I need to accomplish. This has to be done, and that has to be done, and this has to be done, and there's a timetable here, and we've got a lot of work going on, and I've got this going on, and that going on. Do you understand what I'm saying? All of it guided by God. I know I need to do all of these things that I'm doing. But then there's this little trigger when Cindy takes over. I know you don't do that. <laughs> and now you have to accomplish it. And now God was merely the inspiration of the task. And that's not the relationship that's needed. We need to move God from inspirer to a part of the accomplishment. You inspired me to do this, now shh, I'm going to lead, I'm going to do it, but stay with me while I accomplish. Do you see? So that we begin to walk with that energy. When I was sleeping last night, they just kept reminding me, and they just kept saying, 
You all control too much. You let God come in when there's a crisis. Don't we? If there's a crisis, we are all over God. We are all about God, and we are all about letting go. And that's how we let God participate. Bring a miracle again, and we are never failed. The miracles occur. But they were saying, if we could let go control and just show up for a greater idea that we could possibly create on our own, we would really see what God's capable of in our world. Do you know? Just a simple divine idea that we show up for. That we show up for. And then let God do it. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Do you realize how often you take those divine ideas and then squish them? Squish them. Because it's not what you know how to do. It's not what you know how to do. Recently, Patrick and I were talking about how things are not they're not so cool on TV. We try to, you know, like, well, let's watch something on TV. Yeah, what else can we do? <laughs> and I, so I, we were chatting one day at lunch. We had a day off, and we were out shopping and chatting. And I said, oh, Spirit just gave me this great idea for a TV program. It's going to be fabulous. It's awesome. It's fun. Whether it becomes a program or simply a play on our stage. It's fabulous. And so I told a couple of people about it, and I said, I don't even know what the end of it is, but I know that this is how it's going to be. It's about spirit and cool stuff and fun. And spirit said to me, and everybody went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. We'll see if it happens. And spirit said, Cindy, write. Just start writing it. Just sit down and start writing it. I sat down. I wrote the first three, four pages. Let it aside because I am so busy with everything else. They gave me plot after plot after plot and the end. Now, when will it actually be written? I have no idea it's in God's hands. But I've got it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got it. And I guarantee you it will appear on this stage. It will. If it goes no place else, it will appear here. And it will be fabulous and you will love it. But it's not something I myself could have created. And is it something I absolutely have time for? But I have the heart for it. I don't have the time, but I've got the heart. We are being called, all of us, to lift up. And that's a silly little thing, isn't it? It's just a silly little thing. It's a silly little thing. But we are all being called to lift up, to gift the world was something from within us that if we let God flow through it would be magnificently greater than what we're capable of doing. We are these beautiful beings of potential. But when we wake up every day and say, it's up to me, it's up to me, it's up to me, do you hear me? We squeeze. And now it has to look like what I'm capable of making it look like. Which is what I have seen. I can only make it look like what I have already seen. That's the thing that these human beings do. We're replicators. We're fabulous replicators. We replicate what we see. We need inspiration. We look in the outer for it instead of going within. Are you all with me? Yes. Letting that control go, letting that control go so the Christ, that which we are, that beautiful Christ within us, can express.